Welcome to the podcast with Face, Pat, and Tiz. Random topic that I had just on my mind as coming into the show. As I was watching other shit, just think about other podcasts that have come and gone and factions and groups that just broke up. Mm-hmm. You see a lot of podcasts and you see a lot of um just content creators join together and make content that are real and true friends. But throughout doing business, for whatever reasons, they separate. You feel me? Sometimes it's a, it's a nasty public breakup. Sometimes it's not. But it it happened. You feel me? Sometimes both factions go on to find success. Sometimes one part of the party drops off, never to be heard from again, or never to be heard of on the same level again, while the other gains or garners more success. Right. Why do you think that even though they started as friends, they let the business, even though it's just in the aspect of podcasting and y'all all we all get get into it knowing what what we're doing what's expected from all of us you feel me so why do you feel in those individuals factions like i.e um the i am athlete guys uh, and the um, joe button and um uh, rory and, and mal mm-hmm. two different two different mm-hmm. two different shits you feel me two different podcasts two different platforms all different types of individuals you feel me you got your athletes, you got your regular dudes, and your entertainers. Mm-hmm. Each group with friends or somewhat friends or close associates based on whatever their relations were, decided to get in business together. And through whatever, whatever reasons, it seems like something made the friendship part make the business part disintegrate. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Why do you feel or what do you feel can contribute contribute to that or did contribute to that or especially on those two and on those two podcasts or with those two individual groups um although they are very different dynamics as far as like the friendship dynamic outside of the podcast i feel like they're very similar in the fact that like i think both of them ended because people's wishes and desires changed their passions changed their visions changed but there wasn't a conversation to follow up to discuss those changes so like when they started their podcast i feel like what happens a lot of times you know anybody that started a business or a podcast or whatever they go into it and everybody has their vision at that moment in their life so you might be 25 35 65 whatever but then over time in that business, you might learn some new things. You might experience some new things in life. Life changes may happen where some, some things shift, um, you know, whatever. And your vision for like where you see things going in your life may change. And that may affect like what your business vision is. But I think that in those podcasts, especially I think there was a lack of communication like after that initial conversation of like, this is our vision. I think they talked about like numbers and stuff, but they never really had a real follow up conversation until it was too late about like, hey, this is more where I see things going or this is the why behind. I think these percentages would change. It was more just like we focus on these numbers. And when you. When you only focus on the numbers, like the numbers are important. So you have to compartmentalize and keep those things separate when you get to the negotiation. But when you don't understand the why the person wants to negotiate in the first place, right? I think it makes you come to the table with a different attitude and a different perspective than if you understand, all right, this person just had a baby. So they may need a higher percentage and they've been, you know what I'm saying? They may have like these three things that they want to do under this umbrella that'll bring in revenue, but they might not have shared that. So if you ain't shared that and I don't know that, and I'm thinking you just trying to hold me up for money and you focused on the money, then neither one of us have actually communicated like the why I can't give you that or the why you want to even negotiate for more. 
And I think that's where you you kind of fuck up the friendship. And once the friendship fucked up, the business don't matter no more because most people, if you started a business with friends, you kind of did it because they your friends and you wanted the work to be like enjoyable and you wanted to do it with people that was like like minded and that type of thing. So once you lose that, it's kind of like, well, I don't want to show up to work and this shit feel like any other job. I could have just stayed about nine to five for that shit. I mean, so I, I think it, is, it was a lot of communication gaps of like not doing some check ins along the way. Like, um, like I feel like one thing that's been good about uh Angel and Kev on stage, um, one thing I feel like has even been good about us is like as you go along, as like different life changes happen, as you go through like uh different things you got to keep checking in so that the other people know like what's going on with you and they and if you do say all right look well i can't do this this and this no more it ain't coming out of like like people don't fill in those gaps with what their assumption is they know what's going on because there's been check-ins of like okay so now nah, this person got a new job here this person got a new got a new situation over here this person uh them picked up these three new gigs. They're working on this new thing for the for the umbrella of the company. They just it, it that's gonna take more time. Like it, it's you know what I'm saying it's a clear understanding of everybody yeah. involved where they know. And I think that's what a, I think in those situations where you see them breaking up, it's like a a lack of transparency until some shit fucks up. And mm-hmm. And when you do that, it puts people in a position of like, for one, they they feel like they're betrayed because it's like, you my friend, why you ain't just tell me? But for two, now the business is fucked up. So now you're fucking up not only our friendship, but you're also like fucking with my livelihood, my ability to provide. You know what I'm saying? Um, exactly. So I, I, I think it's just keeping those like lines of communication clear of like, hey, this is where I'm at. And I and I think people get so stuck in the business mode, they forget that, like, this is my friend. So, like, even with, like, a situation with Kev on stage and, like, Doughboy, like, I feel like that might have been a situation where Doughboy was going through some shit, knew he couldn't do the shit no more, but he was sitting there taking all these damn hiatuses, not communicating with Kev, but from Kev's point of view, I'm sitting there, got to keep going through these breaks. The people ask me what's going on. I got these guest hosts and all this shit. Like, what's up? So I think, you know, even in that, like, if your vision to change, if you as a dope boy, like, hey, look, I want to do this. I I feel like maybe I'm getting overshadowed. I want to branch out on my own. I don't want to do this podcast no more. Like, say that to your friend because your friend going to understand and be like, well, fuck, yeah, do that shit, nigga. I'm just glad you I'm just glad you ain't drinking again. Or I'm just glad, you know what I'm saying? You doing something good. Like, hell yeah. And then I can figure out the podcast shit because, like, you know what I mean? But I think in a lot of these situations, they don't be talking to each other until the business starts to get affected. And when you start to fuck up the business, everybody's home life is getting fucked up. The wife is unhappy because bills getting paid later or the kids can't get you can't do that thing for your kid that you was planning on because this nigga's sh- sucking and jiving and now the money slowed up. You know what I mean? So I think if they have those proactive conversations instead of reactive conversations, a lot of those situations could have been avoided. Cause I feel like, well, uh, I am athlete. I feel like it was really just Brandon Marshall saw the, he saw the podcast itself as an umbrella, as opposed to seeing the brand as an umbrella and keeping the podcast separate. So when they go back and they're looking at splits, he's looking at the splits from, well, the wife over here doing this and this and this and then somebody else over here doing this under house of athlete and then I got this company over here under house of athlete so they got to get it but he not realizing that Fred and them looking at it like nigga this just a podcast like this was supposed to be just us doing the podcast we're coming yeah. up for our splits based off what this podcast is doing and the podcast is what's driving everything so like what's up but had they had that conversation of Brandon Marshall going to them along the way of like hey now that the podcast off the ground, I had these other things that I wanted to do under this umbrella. And that's going to affect how we split. So 
now that y'all know this, y'all want to revisit that initial conversation we had about splits and maybe, you know, Channing, maybe now you don't want to do the 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 per the per show thing. Maybe now you want to come in as an investor. Maybe Fred, you don't like the investor thing no more. And you want you know what I mean? But like yeah. having that conversation with them so they understand what you're looking at. And them having the conversation as they're getting new new brand, Fred with his hats or whatever, and uh Channing with his fish and so and so like as they're getting new ideas, them coming to him and like letting him know like, hey, I'm gonna do this, but this is how I'm going to do it or this is why and this is how it's going to affect because like once you got a brand as one thing it's going to like anything you doing going to affect y'all if if it, it's the same as like if I, all of a sudden if I go somewhere and I'm doing something that's out of character or that goes against our brand that's going to affect our brand which then if if um, it impacts you and Pat you know what I'm saying so like I don't know. I think it's just having them proactive conversations. I think one of the things that has allowed us to get to year two, which, you know, I've watched some podcasts not make it that far. I think what helps is like when we first started, we we knew kind of like, all right, so this going to be the umbrella. But under that, like, this is kind of where you trying to really focus your attention. This kind of like your end goal, you know what I'm saying, as far as your main thing. And this is kind of your main end goal. And, you know, and as along the way, we've had like check-in meetings to like, all right, so where you at now? Do you still want to do this, this, and this? How you feel about this? Is this still work for you? Da, da, da. So I think doing that alleviates some of that weirdness and it keeps the business fine, which makes like the business gonna have itself gonna have bumps, but the business relationship don't get strained as long as it's proactive communication. Exactly. If before before some shit is fucked up, hey yo. I ain't going I'm going to be out for two months because, you know, this coming up and looming and I got to really, as opposed to waiting till the two months start, you not showing up to shit. And then, hey, bro, what's happening? You know, we done missed out on this bag, and this bag. And then, you know, what I mean, I think in a lot of them situations, they're getting into these bigger bags and these bigger businesses without having a check in conversation as shit has changed. Like if we get like if we was to all of us, like we got a pretty solid understanding you know what i'm saying as far as like our business but like say we say like say say you get a brand deal but it ain't through nothing that we've done together it's through a specific ac83 product that somebody want to use and they want to license with you and da 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 right <laughs> that's not as big of a conversation with us because from the jump, the goal has been like what well, he wants to do fashion design. So that's not under us. That's his fashion design bag. You know what I'm saying? Same as like Pat with his uh his comic book. You know what I'm saying? So like I, I feel like as long as you've had those proactive conversations where you know going into a situation exactly what somebody is working on, you know what you know that hey, this might not be somebody's end all be all. They might be looking to use this to get to the next step. But if you know that going in, then it ain't no funny feeling because everybody already is clear. Like, well, hey, no, nah, when this come up, this is an easy conversation because we already knew that that was gonna be for them. I feel like with Joe Budden and them, especially like they got big bags out of nowhere, but certain people was bringing the bag, but they didn't have a conversation of what was going to happen if it's not a joint bag, if it's like a bag that you specifically brought. Well, how does that look? How does that get split up? Is that exactly. all of us because you because we are a team here and we split that bag that you specifically conjured? Or do we have an understanding of like, well, that's yours and then it, anything that we get is, you know what I mean? So I think a lot of them conversations was never had until it happened. And then when it happened, now it's awkward. Because now if I say something, I look like I'm hating. If you say something, you look like you selfish. If it, Now it bring in some personal feelings into the business. And now our friendship is taking a hit. Now we acting funny toward each other in the personal moments. Now niggas ain't uh, pulling up to each other's events no more to support now niggas ain't coming by the crib to watch the game and shit you know what i mean so i think that in a lot of them situations that we talk about we looking at friends that like 
they didn't think about the business until the business hit, as opposed to going in knowing, all right, I feel like when we came in, podcast was already like going through these breakups. So we had the benefit of like studying and like seeing all oh, shit. Well, if you do that, that's going to fuck up. Oh, we thought they were going to make it forever. God damn, them niggas breaking up. Oh, so that's why. Oh, well, we know not to fuck that up. So like we came in thinking like, all right, what 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 business wise are our goals? What do we want this to look like? What do we from a each individual standpoint, like what is your 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 final level up? What is your thought process? And then I think we came in different that, to merge it as opposed to starting from something that's merged, having these little strings coming off of it, and then having to figure out well what what we'll be doing with that string. Like our shit started separate and we found a way to bring it together so now once it started like anything that comes from them original roots like hey well no nah, that's what we talked about in the beginning that's that was in your bag anyway like so yeah eat that and then mm. we eat this and then you know he eat that and then you know like so i think again check in man like if you are a group, group or something they can talk communication is key yeah, and like your friends at the end of the day. Like if, if somebody your real friend, like you should be able to like have them conversations of like, hey, look, if this go like this, I don't want to split it like this. I, I want to split it like this because I feel like this, this and this. And this is what the business model of this said. And look at how they do this over here. And this, this, this and mm -hmm. this makes like as long as you can justify it, the business should make sense because you're talking to your friends. You ain't talking to somebody that hates you or that like is supposed yeah, no to do you wrong they should want to see you win. win and if you're friends and you're doing something together you're probably going to win anyway because y'all going to enjoy doing this shit so like I feel like coming when you come into it most people come into it looking at all right, what we got to do what we got to do I feel like when we came into it we are we was looking at all right, what not to do first you feel me yeah so we had a ground, we had a groundwork of both what to do and what not to do. Where well, most come in, I right, we gotta do this, we gotta do this, we gotta do this. Never thinking of what not to do. So they make a lot of pitfalls and they have a lot of more learning steps. But we had a strong foundation. And like you said, each individual had their own vision of what they individually want to do and found the way in those aspects to still come together and make something else where people try to do the reverse in most in, in most things you feel me? but also no. like how many podcasts that have broken up do you think before they broke up had conversations like every three four months where they just checked in to see like hey man do you still want to do this are you even still interested like you know people they don't have a conversation. Like, like like if 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 you look at uh Jesus and Mero like one of the dudes, I feel like one of the reasons they broke up is because one of the dudes wanted to do like writing and shit and wanted to focus more on that. So the doing that show together became less of like a, a thing that he was passionate about. You know what I mean? And that's normal. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just like anything. Like you grow older, your your interests change, your passions change, your knowledge base grows and other shit. You find out new shit. You be like, oh, I think this is something I want to explore. So that's normal. But if you don't have that conversation with your homeboy and you're feeling this way, but you're acting weirder on set and you're being more distant in personal times and like now it, it starts to become a thing where it could have just been mm -hmm. a quick, hey, man, you know, as we've grown and evolved, bro, you know, I'm here. I want to do this, this and this. Let's figure out an exit strategy, you know, how we going to end it, you know what I mean, so that we could both be straight. You know what I mean? And, and end in a way that boosts both of our brands as we leave. All that shit. But you don't have that good conversation to like be able to do that when now you done pretty much just like sprung this shit on each other and now you forced to deal with it in real time. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But I, I think really that's that communication. It's the same shit in relationships, yo. Like if you look at like successful relationships that be lasting for, for hella long, like most of the time it'd be like throughout their lives as they grew into different eras. Oh, I'm here with that creepy shit, this nigga. Uh, but as they grew into uh, different eras of their life, like 
you've seen that couple kind of reinvent themselves and like kind of reestablish like, all right, this is what our relationship looked like when we was 20. But now we 30, we got to reconfigure some shit because now we on the paper chase for real. We on the grind. Now that we 40, we trying to get ready for retirement. Now that we retired, you know what I'm saying? Our relationship look a little different. Our dynamic might look a little different because now we older, we we like different things. I might now want to sit around the house all day and build model airplanes and you might want to get out in the garden and we got to figure out, well, what does that look like? Because we used to just want to do the same mm-hmm. thing. Now we at a point where we got different interests and we want to pursue them, but we still love each other, but we got to figure out a way to make that shit work. You know what I mean? So it's like, I think it's just like constant sure. communication, constant like checking in, letting people know like where you're at, what your changes are, where you've grown to, if you've evolved to feel a different way about something like, you know what I mean? Just talking to folk and hey man, at the end of the day, if you're doing business with your friend, man, they your friend. They your friend. Talk to them. You know what I mean? There you I, go. Keep your friend, make better. You let know you're in business and you want to keep your business your top priority. You change to the friends. So make that a priority too. And then you got at the end of the day, you know, I'm in business with my friend. Even though we in business, in business conversations, I can still approach him as my friend about the business. And this friendship is for that ball is like it should be. This conversation should be understood as that on that type of level. Facts. And I, I think, yeah, I think even on, uh, when Joe Button was on I Am Athlete, I think he said that like one of the biggest things was just like, you know, that he could have done better was like the way he communicated and stuff. And I think that's, it's, if you look at the root of a lot of issues where you see like people who really do fuck with each other, but they go left. These R&B groups that break up, these, uh, these singing groups, these uh bands, these motherfucking uh comedy troops, like the these any group that you know that was great that like broke up, you would come down to like communication and just like shit change. We are getting older. We've we've gone through different life changes, but nobody takes the time to just go ahead and check in and say, Hey, I don't feel like this no more. I feel like this, or hey, this new thing came up. I wanna try this, or hey. It's about to happen to us, y'all. Let's talk about what we're going to do when it happens. How, how y'all want to deal with it? What makes sense for you? Let's go ahead and talk this out now. And people put pussyfoot around and don't have them conversations. Then the shit go crazy and then they don't got no answer for it. Like, I feel like right now, if we had a billion dollar off on the table, no matter which arm it came from, no matter what type of situation it was, like, I feel like we have a good enough foundation from the conversations and the meetings we've had to, like, know exactly kind of how to go into that. Or even if we hadn't had a conversation about that specific thing, like, I feel like we know, like, where each other is currently enough to kind of understand, like, all right, when I go in this conversation, I need to at least understand this, this, and this. Or, you know what I mean? Like, so I feel like, man, just communication. Maybe we need to start doing a master class on like podcast communication, how to do a business with your friends. So that's yeah, that's what I did. Not on horn, but I feel like we've done yeah. Hold on, say that one more time. You got Robocop on. Hey. I said, I feel we should. We should get some good information. Well, folks, let's do shit. Yeah, yeah. Hey, man, like, I don't even know that many friend groups that's been together, like, 25 years, 24 years, 21 years, 20, you know what I mean? Like, I don't even know that many friend groups that's been, like, together that long and, like, consistently together, not like, oh, well, we ain't talked to each other for, like, 15 years, and then we popped up, and then we got cool again. Like, no, like, I mean, like, consistently, like, no, we've been... Friends that whole time, ain't, ain't took no breaks. Nope. Still kicking it. Like, so I think that's something to like the communication level that we've had over the years. And I think it, it's a lot of people that can learn from that. Cause I think that's a real thing. Like it's a communication deficit in people where people are too like big to ask certain questions or too big to say things to they people that they love or too scared, I should say, even sometimes. But like there there's something to just like 
saying it because you're scared because if you're scared that's probably the thing that you most need to say because then y'all will be good but if you don't say it it's probably mm-hmm. happening us to fuck up and now you're gonna have, have a, another type of conversation that could break something where you could have just had a conversation where it was just a quick conversation be like oh all right now i feel that but you know what i mean because yeah. i watched joe and them for that you know like when you as an audience member knows niggas about to break up and they don't realize it. Yeah, that's something. Because you can see them niggas, like them niggas was challenging each other to fights and shit. And like niggas, I'm like, niggas, do y'all know y'all recording this? Like this don't look fake. <laughs> like y'all niggas really want to scrap. Like you really disgusted by this nigga. Just sitting beside him is turning, like making you about to throw up. Like that's supposed to be your boy. We can we can sense this. You talking about Drake ain't gonna make us not know that there's some tension. And I and I think that that's sad that they couldn't have them conversations. They probably couldn't have made the podcast. About- but now I like Ish and Ice, so now I'm glad they broke up because Ish and Ice better. <laughs> and I ain't heard from Roy and Malin. It was cool. I, didn't even know. I haven't watched not another episode. I watched the first one where they talked about Joe Button and it was like, all right, well, please out to y'all niggas. Peace out. That's something that peace out, Rory. I don't even, even Sorry. Lay on that. Communication, nigga. Communication is the key element, man. Like, and everything you get with anybody, people with yourself, you got to communicate, man. Like, if communication ain't there, shit gonna always fall to the wayside because everybody got to be on the same level, man. Uh, if y'all bench and choke, bitch with everything. Everybody needs to be on. Big facts. But yeah, man, we glad y'all showing up this week with us. To communicate with your boy, the partner. Indeed. I don't know how that came out because I never can tell when they go robot whether it's going to be like normal or not when they play back. But if y'all heard what he said, then y'all heard what he said on the same damn level. Yeah. Nick. Um, <laughs> but uh, again, man, thank y'all for communicating with us. Uh, Please continue to do so. Uh, I don't have a black business this week. You got one, Faith? No, no, no. Well, support us then, motherfucker. Go ahead and do so. Uh, it's Labor Day, so, you know, it's a good time to you, while you're off. Go ahead and make sure you listen to the podcast. Check out our clips on YouTube, you know, and support your boys, man. There's several ways you could do that. The freeway is always, man. Make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe on YouTube and all other platforms that you may be listening or watching on. Make sure that you do that. It, it helps us with the algorithm. It gets it gets the YouTube juices going and gets us in play. And, man, it gets us closer to our goal, which is getting monetized there. And we are very close to it. I think we like uh, 8 to 10 subs away uh, from hitting that 1,000 sub mark. You know, that that beautiful mark, that that milestone that we set for ourselves this year. So please help us get to our two year goal before we even get to our two year mark uh, by making sure you like, comment, share and subscribe. Also, make sure you support financially. If you like to, you can go to dollar sign partner tiers one. That's dollar sign partner tiers one on cash app. Or you can go to buymeacoffee.com backslash the partners where you can always sign up for a membership for four ninety nine dollars a month or you can donate for as little as a dollar. You can also sign up for a monthly uh, fee of four ninety nine dollars per month and be a monthly supporter of the pod and help us to continue to make improvements to the infrastructure, make improvements to the podcast itself, you know, and hopefully make this our full-time gig where we can give you more content than we currently are giving you. Um, so, yeah, help us get to those goals. Support financially if you can. Um, and if you want to support financially, but you want some back in return, what do you got to do, Faith? Go to the stove, the online stove. What's the name of the stove? It's the door is called Art and Club. What's the website? Club and Soup. Drinkclothing.com. How do you spell Art Trade? 
A R T R E clothing.com. Say it again. A R T R E clothing.com. No, we would never spell clothing for you. But what we will do is give you a promo code to save some money. And that promo code is Partners22. Partners22. Make sure you make the word all caps Partners22. Check us out, man. And go there right now. Go there right now. You all for Labor Day anyway. You might as well spend some time browsing the uh, store, checking out the gear, and get you some of that good, cool partners or AC83 gear right now for your Labor Day weekend. Remember to use that promo code as well. And as always, man, uh, make sure if you want to get in touch with us outside of the pod, make sure if you want to, you know, just shoot us some material to react to, shoot us some topics you want us to talk about, or just holler at your boys and shoot the shit. You can always hit us up at the partners at sign T H E P O D N A S. That's the Twitch, TikTok. That's the t- uh the Twitter. That's the Instagram. If you're on Facebook, it's Tears Face Pat. All the partners. That's Tears Face Pat. All the partners. Or you could just type the partners in your search bar, and you can find us. If you forget everything that we've said so far, and you like, damn. I can't remember what they had said about the store or damn. How could I donate or damn? Where do I go to the, to talk to them? Just go to thepodnas.com. That's T-H-E-P-O-D-N-A-S.com. And you can get all of that information and more. It's a one-stop shop for everything the partners and everything that we talked about is just one click away when you get to thepodnas.com. Um, and yeah, man. This has been another episode. We at episode 92 on y'all mofos. And as always, man, I've been one third of the partners. It's your boy, Tiz, and I've been along with. You know, he ain't here as we. But for the Padawan, I'm a third. Yeah, motherfuckers. And even though Pat ain't here, he's still here in spirit. And you got the three partners. And we about to be back to y'all motherfuckers again next week. Episode 93 coming on the way. Clips from episode 92 on the way. The last show coming tomorrow. Motherfuckers, it's the partners. Bitches. Have a great week, y'all. Love y'all. Thanks for fucking with us. Hey.